Hi, I'm Satin Brownie, and this is Finding Happy Podcast. Positive psychology. Have you ever heard the term? Well, I have with me today a positive psychology practitioner. Her name is Petergill Oates Blake, and she's been doing this for a while now. And so today I'm going to be having a conversation with her. Um, she's going to be sharing with us principles, intervention, um, ideas or, or recommendations that you and I can use to help us discover our internal joy and help us understand how much she's going to give us uh, some information that will help us understand um, how real it is that we have full control over how we feel, what we feel, what we do, and how our choices impact on our ultimate ability or capacity or capability to really feel joy and be joyful. You, you deserve in your life, we deserve in this life, this here life, not in heaven, this here life to, to feel good, to feel good about ourselves, to feel good about our day, to, feel, to embrace um, our world and all its beauty, to, to be able to, regardless of what our turmoil or turbulence is happening in our lives, to still be able to get up and, and be happy <laughs> and laugh and feel good and, and feel light and know that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, we are destined for greatness and we are destined for a joyful life because it is, it is ours to have. So as we go through today's podcast episode, my hope is that you'll take, scream, release, embrace, breathe, feel good, feel good, feel good. Thank you so much for joining me and for, for, for listening and for listening, following all the podcast I am at. Um, this is episode 11. Thank you so much for all the persons who have been interacting with me. We're going to go into the conversation now with Peter Gale and listen to me. I'm telling you, she had some, this was a great conversation. Let's get into it. Thank you for coming on Finding Happy Podcast. I'll tell you a little about what it is. This is pretty much my journey of mm-hmm. um, discovering consistently and continuously discovering and delving into my own happiness. And so what I'm doing is having conversations with people I admire, respect, who empower me or inspire me in some way, one way or another, and you're one of those persons. Oh, I remember when I started, I, um, I relocated and then I started a meditation room. Mm-hmm. And your book was the first book. <laughs> <laughs> that I put up in there and I remember persons every time they would come because I work from home they'd be like oh my gosh what is this I'm like it's my meditation room is where I go to pray and I don't let anyone in and, and everybody was just so fascinated by it but then it was my rescue so thank you for your book and your words and I'm just going to start there what made you write that book um after two years i i asked myself the same question what made me write that book (laughs) i i I think it was um it was a part of my own journey i at that time i was very 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 involved in a lot of business i am going to call it and i i felt as if i didn't have any purpose Wow. And I remember somebody said to me, I was at a meeting at church, a leadership meeting, and somebody said to me, Petra, I don't see your purpose manifesting. Wow. And for me, this was very, it, it, it hit me for six. I mean, I, I took it very personal because I saw myself as someone with a lot of purpose and I was so involved in everything and for you to say to me that you don't see it manifesting manifesting, I'm like (laughs) God what is happening right here you know how can somebody say that you know I I basically do everything in this church and so I I, it it, it also um, got me to the point where you know I really sat down and I had a talk with God and and then the idea came for the book. 
you know, the idea came that I could share, you know, my own experiences, my own purpose with women. You know, and, and so I started writing the, the devotionals every morning until it morphed into a book. Wow. Tell us about the book. Um, the book is The Journey Become, to Becoming a Woman of Purpose. Um, the book is basically a three-part book where it's a, it's a devotional. Yes. And it has three parts. Knowing God, knowing yourself, and finding your purpose. So I personally believe that in order for you to find your purpose, you have to understand and have a relationship with a higher being. And, um, you know, you have to have a relationship with God. Because we didn't create ourselves, did we? Right, we did not create ourselves <laughs> at all. Right. And, I, I really don't believe that we created ourselves. I really don't believe that this earth just got up and, you know, one day. Happened. Right. And it happened. And so I think it was important for us to totally understand where we were coming from. Totally important for us to understand our roots. And so the first part of the book is about knowing God. Then the other part is about knowing yourself because... Self-awareness is so important. It is, it, is, it, is, it is very, very important for you to, to find your purpose. It's very important for you to have relationships. And so I had to have a chapter there about self-awareness. And so the other part of it is, is just getting to know who you are as a person. Because that is the only way you will know where you're going because if you don't know what your likes and your dislikes are, how are you going to motivate people? Are you going to encourage people? Are you going to inspire others? And you don't even know what inspires you. Right. So that set of devotionals is about self-awareness and getting to know who you are. The other part of it you now is about finding your purpose. So after you have actually understood where you're from, understood your roots, and then, you know, you get to know yourself. Then you go out there, you go and motivate, you go and inspire. You go and be your best self and be the best you that you can be. You go and you find you're happy. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So that, 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 yes. that is basically what the book is about. Um, as I said, it's devotional. It, um, each, 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 each devotional is made up of... Um, a scripture from the Bible, a song. And it has these pebbles, which I love. Yeah. I love that. Yes. yes. So um, they didn't have this, um, what I would call an um, exhortation, for want of a better word. And then it has a little prayer, and then it has those pebbles. Awesome. From right. Wonderful. So tell us, who is Pettergill Oates Blake? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we know you're an author. Yes. Um, Peter Gilles Blake is, is, she's always changing, though. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's always changing. Um, so, if I'm supposed to be talking about the things that I achieved. Yes. Um, We'd then, love to hear those. <laughs> <laughs> then I would say that I'm an author, I'm a positive psychologist or a positive psychology practitioner. And I actually am also a project manager. Yes. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So um, I I also speak. So those are those are the titles that I would have. <laughs> and um, who are you outside of those titles? Outside of those titles, I would say I am a wife. I am a family member, a sister, a, sister <laughs> to a lot of people. <laughs> Yes. And I, I am my mother's child. Oh. I often say I'm my mother's baby because I'm the last one. Wow. Um, I am um, somebody who loves to to be happy. Somebody who loves nice. to inspire others and motivate others to be happy. Awesome. Why um, positive psychology? 
positive psychology was another part of the journey. I I remember how I stumbled, well, I kind of stumbled upon positive psychology. I have a friend who, after I completed the book, and if you read the book, you would probably think that I, I, I was dabbling in positive psychology at the time, but I wasn't. Wow. It was just who I was, you know, the kind of person, um, you know, who, as I said, is all about being happy motivating and inspiring and I was looking to do a master's. I um, started, so it was all about my journey to finding my purpose right, and I, remember right. I started a master's in counseling psychology and I had to stop mainly because of financial reasons and some of the business in my life <laughs> and then I decided, after I completed the book, I decided that, you know what, I, I need to go do my master's again. And a friend of mine, you know, was helping me to search. And one day he came and he said, Petra, I think this is what suits you. Wow. And it was a master's of applied positive psychology at the University of East London. A definition on positive psychology center for positive psychologists, just for the benefit of the listeners. Uh, positive psychology is the scientific study of the strengths that, ena that enable individuals and communities to thrive. The, the field is founded on the, on the belief that people want to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives, to cultivate what is best within themselves, and to enhance their experiences of love, work, and play. Is that what, what is your concept of it? Um, it is it is all of that, but a simple yes. a simple concept of um, what positive psychology is is it's just a scientific study of what makes you happy, or what makes you feel make, makes people feel worthwhile. What did you discover? What what or what has been discovered to be what makes people happy? Okay, so um, so there are many theories, and um, we could start with the f um, first one. Um, so. Positive psychology has a lot of, it, it, it starts from way back. It did not just start with, with, with Martin Seligman, as you, you know, you might see. You will see that positive psychology yes. started with a lot of those philosophers, you know, from, from way back. And um, so it, it is based on a lot of theories that are out there to include eudaimonia, which is the really the meaning and purpose that 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 thing that gives you meaning and purpose in life, or the hedonic concept, which talks about life satisfaction and um, you know just basically enjoying life. I mean, if you think about hedonism. In Jamaica, you know, this hotel where persons will go and <laughs> yes. have fun. So, you know, it, 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 is, it, yes. it is based on those two things, you know, right. mainly. But um, my, my favorite um, concept of, of in positive psychology is the PERMA, which is Martin Seligman's uh -huh. um, theory yes. of happiness. And... Um, if you read about it, you will see where he moves from just a theory of happiness to a theory of flourishing. Yes, and, and well-being. It, it really talks about five pathways to well-being, which is it's called PERMA. So you have the positive emotion, mm -hmm. you have engagement, you have relationships, meaning and purpose, and accomplishment. So this is my favorite, most favorite theory of well-being, and there are others. Right, um, but I really do believe that with a good balance of all of these, you yes. truly can find happiness. Mm -hmm. um, positive emotion being that um, those invoke just invoking those emotions that makes you feel happy. So spending some time with your family members, or you know, in Jamaica you might those who have who have family members that make them happy. <laughs> Right. And I use that a lot because I have really yeah. good, strong family. Right. You no, know, there are persons who actually don't have that. So <laughs> right. you might find that, you know, when you, you exercise or you just simply go on the corner, you might meditate. Right. 
right? Mm -hmm. And um, I use going on the corner in Jamaica because a lot of guys will go on the corner and and and, and just you know you will just sit sure. and, and and you have that, or you might go to the movies, or you might go to a party. You know, I am I am um, I am finding that dancing. I can't dance, but it it invokes some positive <laughs> emotions for me. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, listening to some good music, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, right. So, so that's the first fear. And then there's engagement at work. Um, engagement, you know, there's something called flow, and it talks about, it, it really is that feeling that you get where you are so immersed into what you're doing that time passes. Yeah. Right, so it's about doing what is it that you love, using your strengths. Your strengths come naturally, so it, it, it's always using those strengths in your daily life, in your daily work, you know, to ensure that you are engaged. Then there are relationships, and these relationships are those positive relationships that build you up, those positive relationships that that causes you to want to excel and to become your best self. Those positive relationships that do invoke positive emotions as well. Yes. And then there is meaning and purpose, you know, which is which is so very, very important. Um, you know, there's this cartoon I usually use whenever I'm presenting where it talks about, um, you know, at one end, you know, you, you are born, and then at the other end, you're dead. And, mm -hmm. you know, what, what happens in between. In the middle. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I believe you were created for a purpose. So you need to find out what is that purpose. Why am I on this earth? And then, you know, you, you, you live for that. You live to, to, to inspire others or whatever it is your purpose is. You know, you live for that and you ensure that you are getting it in. You know, you, you are kind to other people just for no reason at all other than just to be kind to them, you know, that kind of thing. And then there is accomplishment, accomplishment having to do with not just accomplishing, you know, getting a degree or a master's or something like that, but even those very simple day-to-day, -day, you know, you find simple day-to-day -day accomplishment. I mean, if right, it is right. that you... I, I often use this example where I was baking bread pudding. Now, I love bread pudding, but I cannot bake. And, <laughs> and I decided that I was going to bake me a bread pudding. And I did it, and Aww. I shared the whole experience right through. So when I did the mixing and, 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 and you know, the baking, I, I took pictures and I sent it. You know, you, you need to savor those things, those moments yes, that... Yes you have an achievement um, in project management, um, you know, a simple thing as achieving a milestone, a deliverable, you know, you, yep, you yep. save that at work, you, you tell everybody about it. And what mm -hmm. it does is it, it builds your confidence to do it better next time and, you know, invoke those oxytocin and, and, and positive emotions and so on. I found that. I was working to survive. I wasn't necessarily working to thrive. I, there was no concentration on myself. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What is it that it, what is what I'm doing evoking in me? And so I started this and persons have asked me why finding happy, you know? So why is finding that happiness important and key to our to individuals individual lives? Um, it's important, as you said, it's not just about finding happy, but it, it's about thriving, it's about flourishing. I mean, a lot of us, um, you know, we are here, and as you said, you know, you're only surviving, or in positive psychology, we would say you're languishing. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, you get up every day, you go to this job, and you complain every day about this job, and you're sad. <laughs> yes. Right? Um, but the truth is, you know, if you if you if you totally understand, if you if you strive for happiness, and believe you me, it's you know, I always say that happiness is a choice. It is. It, it's not something that just comes. Like mm -hmm. like any like anything that you do, anything that you want to achieve, you have to put some work into it. And and work, you know, one day I had this discussion with my husband. I was saying mm -hmm. to him that relationship is work and he said, No, it's not <laughs> 
he often see work as something that is negative. And and so, you know, he, he we spent like about three good hours um arguing and um <laughs> arguing against people see as negative. Let me say have a dis having a discussion about um you know, work. And the truth is, people tend to see, if you say, you know, you put some work into it, people see it as negative. But the wow. truth is, you know, you actually have to put some work into being happy. Mm-hmm. So as an example, like, like yesterday, mm-hmm. my husband, he works in another parish. And right. um, it's a Friday night, and I'm going home to be alone. And I'm like, I, I'm not going home to be alone tonight because... The whole day, I, I think I woke up and I was in a mood because, you know, I, I'm missing him. I, right. I, I, when I was leaving work, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to the movies. I'm going to the movies by myself. And it was such a weird concept because I've never done it. <laughs> but I needed to, to invoke some positive emotions. I needed not to come home and sit and mope and, oh, right. I'm husband and I'm sad and, Mm-hmm. You know, so I decided that you know what I have to change. Let's change do something about it. Feeling right and do something about it. And I went and instead of sitting in the traffic, I went to the movies by myself. And there it you was go. A liberating feeling. It was <laughs> such a happy feeling. And when awesome. I went to the movies, I suddenly realized that people do this. <laughs> Yes, we do this. Yes. I do it. <laughs> there are so many people there who went by themselves. I'm like, yes. Wow. You know, wow. So, so you have to, it, it's very important for you to to find your happy in order for you to to thrive. It, it's yes. important for you to find your happy in order for you, and I don't want to use my happy, but in order for you to have a happy life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I mean, some people might tell you that money makes them happy. Okay, I mean, studies show that money really don't make you happy for a long time. But suppose it is money that makes you happy. Then be happy. You understand? As long as you find whatever you need. Right, right. I mean, to find that, to, mm-hmm. to, to find that awesome. Satisfaction. Yeah, that's, that's life satisfaction. I really, I, 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 I think um, my, my own happiness is when I have a good balance of life satisfaction, purpose yes. and um invoking positive effects or positive emotions yes. as often as possible right in order for me to go through this life in order for me to go through another day i have to ensure that i have those things there and you i go. find that when i do that you know i can be anything that i want to be yes. i don't have to be this one person i don't have to just be an author i don't have to just be a speaker Right. Um, I remember two years ago, three years ago, I, I got up and I left my job. Yes. As a project manager, I, I, I left the job because I was like, you know, this is not serving me anymore. It's not doing what I want. What I, what I want. It's not making me happy. And I, and I, and I, and I started a business and I was doing that for like about three years. And then, after three years, I realized that you know what. I don't want to be just doing this again. I mean, there are some other things Mm -hmm. that I want to do. I mean, it was not giving me as much money as I wanted. Right. (laughs) I want to go to Italy in two years. Yes. You know, I had to do something else. And I actually am going back to the same job. (laughs) It might sound like some people are like, okay, so why did you do that? But I'm happy. Time. You need a time. Yeah, but, but you're not the same person. The I'm person who you were when you left, you're not that person anymore. Not at all, and I never right. regretted leaving the job any at all. Mm-hmm. Never regretted leaving the job, but now I'm there, and I'm getting up every day, and I'm going there, and I'm happy because you no, know, because I understand what it is to flourish and to thrive in any space that I'm in because I understand myself, I know myself now, I'm very self-aware and I know exactly what is it that I need. I can literally be in this job. I was talking to uh, my my boss 
one of my bosses, and I was saying to him, you know, I, I said to him, how was your weekend? And he said to me, I wish it was continuing. And I said to him, do you know that you have a choice? He said, <laughs> mm-hmm. And he said to me, yeah, you know, yeah, I can leave his job, but, you know, who's going to take care of me? Are you going to take I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that, but you do have a choice. And, you know, I was saying to him that, you know, you can even come here and still be happy. You know, you just don't let yeah. the stress of the job get to you. And I was sharing with him that what I do every morning where while I'm, I'm coming into work, I will listen to something positive. I set my frame of mind, you know, because it's, nothing has changed about the place. The place is still the same stressful place that it was. But now what I do, I get up and I set my frame of mind. I yes. listen to something positive. I listen to something happy that causes me to dance. You know, <laughs> I decide that, you know, today I am going to set the set the tone of my day. Yes. And and that does it for me. That does it for me. And you know, so I'm still doing my business, but I'm yes. also you know, also you know, gainfully employed. One of the things I often say is when you discover who you are, what you like, what your values are, what motivates you, you're able to look at the work that you're doing and identify the connecting factors. Right. What what resonates with what you value, what 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 um what values that does a company has have that you also share that you can connect with because you know what I think I think nothing and this is just my personal I don't think there's any one fix <laughs> for any for for anybody's ultimate satisfaction in life. There it's a multiplicity of things. A variety. Like it's almost like you have to get a potpourri of experiences yeah. to really experience that. Ooh, yeah, that's that 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 feeling of joy. And so I think from a work perspective, it's identifying those little areas in your job that connect with who you are personally, connect with your purpose. And for example, if you went there, say say you went back because you needed to earn extra money, then let that be the motivating factor. Right, right. It doesn't mean right. I was just gonna say that even if the company does not have values that right. connect your values, then mm-hmm. um find those values. There are other things. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, why are you really in this job? And and use that to motivate right. you. But but don't just get up. Um one of the things I, I I find troubling though, you know, I am back and I look at the person who stayed, right? Right. And I realize that, you know, the job broke them. Wow. You know, there are values that they had and, um, you know, there are things that they would do. and But the, because they just stayed because, you know, I just want some money and I have to stay in this job and I don't have a choice. Right. And so it's important for persons to understand that you do have a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, How do you think, go ahead, how would you recommend that someone identifies, um, I was introduced to this, this um, term recently, bending your reality. How, would, how do you recommend for someone like, like what you're speaking of to bend their reality so that they can become empowered to make cho- decisions that are in their favor and choices that can give them the outcomes they want. Um, well, I would not say I would not say it's bending your reality. Okay. Okay. I would say that I mean you just have to understand what is your reality. <laughs> okay. You understand that there is not just one way to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Let's say that. Um, um, you don't have to be one one person. It, it might sound weird, but you really don't just have to be one person. There are so many different facets to you as a person, mm-hmm. right? What are those different facets? And then you look at what are those different facets and see how is it that you can balance those different things that you want to do. As you said, what are your values? What are the things that you like? What are your strengths? Can you use these things while you're there and you're making money and so on? Can you can you still maintain your value? And I, I think this is where reality comes in. If it is, I believe that if it is that you cannot maintain 
your value. If it is that you, if you find that something is changing you to the point where, you know, you become a different person, I don't think you should settle for it. What do you say to the persons? Because I've met some persons who they're just not yet at the place where they know how to, to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like understand. The, because Gallup, Gallup research shows that 87% of persons are disengaged, are not engaged in their work. That's a lot of people. What do you think is hindering them from getting to the place where they say, I'm not going to do this anymore? Based on your experiences, yeah. what, what are some of the challenges you see out there? I believe that is fear. I believe for most persons it is fear. Okay, so I have children. And I am not going to do this because I, how am I going to afford right. what I, you know, you have a particular lifestyle. I am just recently, my sister, she, she was getting miserable at her job. And, um, you know, she's like, how am I going to do this? And, you know, she, she was fearful to leave a job, but she left. <laughs> she left. <laughs> left and when mm -hmm. she left she found out that you know there were other ways of making income right so I think it is fear of the unknown right. and I mean you know we know that persons fear change you know I mean persons yeah. like to be in a comfort zone and so I, I do believe that the biggest thing is fear fear of stepping out there and you will even find that there are persons around you as well. When you're about to make a big step, persons around you will say, why are you doing this? Mm. Because of their own fear. It's not necessarily because they don't want you to be better, but they have a fear. So I, right. I think that it, it is about, it, it's just about fear. Because the moment yeah. that you can stop fearing, the moment that you believe that, you know, you, you decide that, you know, no matter what will happen, okay, if I die, I die. Right. Right. And I, and I do believe that most of the persons who are successful, most of our heroes and those persons, they made a step. They decided that if this step is going to kill me, it is going to kill me, but I'm going to do it. Right, right. And so it, it, it's just a matter of... Um, but but persons don't realize that you're really killing yourself when you really don't make that step. Yeah. yeah. So you see what are, dying. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges or what are some of the common um, challenges that you find that your clients or the people that you speak with or the people that you work with from in your positive psychology work? What are some of the results that you see in whether you do the research or just in interacting with clients directly? What are some of the common issues that prevent them from life satisfaction, achieving life satisfaction? Um, some persons, um, as I said, I think the biggest one is fear. Okay. Um, but I think um, other people is, is lack of awareness. Hmm. You know, they don't know. They don't know, um, you know, what is there. Support as well, family support. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one. Or, you know, just support overall because it doesn't have to be family. Um, you know, there are, there are persons out there who have support groups. Um, so I believe that if it is that you have the support and the know-how, because, um, for example, I believe that, that um, parents, a lot of parents don't know how to parent. Mm. And because they don't know how to parent, they are having a lot of issues with their children, right? Um, a lot of persons, and I use parenting again, you know, are fearful, you know, you're fearful of letting the child go, and so the child rebels. Yes. You know, I, I, think, I, I think the main things I see is know-how, knowing how to do it. How do I become happy? How do I just go out there and inspire somebody? And then right. the support. You don't have, you know, your partner doesn't support you. Um, because, I mean, in my personal journey, I, I believe that, I mean, so as much as I will say, okay, I left my job. I wanted to leave a job for many years, but until I found 
until my husband came into my life. Right. I never made that step. Mm. It was important that he said to me, Peter, you can do this. It, it was important for me to right. have something like that, for right. me to do that step. So support is very important. And then, um, you know, mm -hmm. just knowing how mm -hmm. to do it. And then getting rid of that fear. Right, right. Yes, yes. What are what are some of the I don't know how much presentations you do. About how many do you think you do like for a year? Um well I have not been doing a lot of marketing. Uh maybe two, three per month. Okay. Oh right. cool. It, it's not something that is known. I think when I did the um the masters I was the only person who did the masters. Oh, wow. In the Caribbean. Yeah. Okay. The reason I asked is I wanted to, to get an understanding of what was the most um, effective um, topic that you discussed or the most repetitive topic that you were asked to speak on or address. Um, well, for me, I did, I, I did PERMA more than anything else. And I said it's my absolute okay. best. It was one of those things that I, 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 that was what I was marketing. Right. So, um, when I went out there, I, I, I told persons that this is my product. Right, right. And so there were other products that I had, like I did a parenting, um, a parenting, a parenting seminar on, on things like resilience and for parents, oh. you know, how to make your child more resilient yes. and stuff like that. But I, I actually went out there to spread the whole thing of being happy. So, right. so that's what I <laughs> Awesome. How do you think, how would you recommend an ordinary person use pers um, positive psychology? It's about using it in your everyday life. You have yes. to use it in your everyday life. Um, so right. basically right. It, it is proving that what you're doing works. So it is proving that mm. when it is that you do random acts of kindness, yes. random acts of kindness, um, you know, is correlated with you being happier. Mm -hmm. It's proving that when you invoke positive emotions, you become more creative. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so that's what, what positive psychology is. It's a science. Yes, and yes. The, the whole thing about it is, is, to, is to prove that, you know, you can, doing certain things will make you feel better. It will make you feel happier. It will make you more right. successful, more productive. Right, right. Right. But but these are things that you really do in your everyday life. You just don't know. Like one of the things I I had a radio program. Yes. Um. And one of the things that I, I I did with that radio program is, it was a Christian station. So I wanted to show I wanted to show a correlation between, or an association, with. Um, the study of happiness and what's in the Bible. Oh. I realized that there are a lot of things that are in the Bible that a lot of people don't believe, but I believe that um, positive psychology proves that these things are true. Wow. Can you give us one or two examples? There is one that I that, that always comes to mind. There's this only one note that comes to mind. Uh, there's a scripture in the Bible said that, um, oh Lord, it says that um, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. And this is not even positive psychology, to be honest. It's, so maybe it's not a good one. It's, okay. it's actually the science of it. When you do your research, yes. you will see that um, if you accept those, if you cry, if if, right. you, if you cry, then you um, what it does it it releases some some um, some hormones or something to that effect, mm -hmm. uh, which actually makes you happy. Right. So well, can, at least at, at the very least the stress. <laughs> right. You understand? So, so I'm, yes. if you just if you just do a cry, if you just uh, yes. If, yes. if you just get it out of your system, mm -hmm. then what crying does um, it it actually releases. That happy hormone. There's right. a thing that I call. Sorry, go ahead. 
Mm-hmm. I'm finished. There's this thing that I call the droning man syndrome. And that is exactly what it is. What happened to me is I, I was going through a tough time, but then I realized my entire life was a tough time <laughs> growing up the way I did. But this time around, I remember I was on my knees and I was praying and I was crying this guttural cry. Like I was just bawling like, God, please, if, if you could just let this pass, if you could just let me open my eyes and this is no longer an issue, <laughs> I would just be grateful to you. And I remember in mid prayer is like a voice in my head said to me, stop, just stop crying. And I stopped crying. And that was when the term, the, 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 the whole term came to me, Raquel, this is drowning man syndrome where you're drowning. So you're grabbing at any little straw, anything to try to save yourself. And in so doing, you make it worse for yourself because someone may want to come to help you, but because you're, you're doing that, they can't come in to save you. They have to wait until you stop and let go. And so in the middle of the prayer, I stopped and I changed what I was saying. And I said, you know what, God, no more, because I do this all the time. I'm always, it it happens, something happens. I am crying. I'm praying to you, wishing that it could just change. And then I decided I'm going to feel this pain. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to go through it. And I remember I started saying, you know what, God, let me feel this pain. And I went hungry for two weeks, not because I wanted to, I had nothing to eat. And I decided I wasn't going to beg anymore. I wasn't going to borrow anymore. I wasn't going to ask anymore. I was just going to feel this because it was as a result of choices that I made why I I was where I was. And then I decided I'm going to feel it because it's not happening again. And so what I did was I started praying thank you prayers instead. Yeah. Thanking him for where I was, thanking for what was happening. And then I started making different, paying attention to my decisions that I was making. Because the, sometimes we don't even understand how our choices that we made last week, last month, last year is affecting what we're doing or the delays that we're experiencing today. And so I started doing the work and getting to know myself so I could understand the choices I was making because I realized I had absolutely no clue. Everyone was telling me how successful I was and I just couldn't get it. And it was just frustrating me that people thought I was so successful (laughs) because I couldn't see the financial security that should, that I thought a successful person, successful person should have. I didn't have it, but then I didn't see my own worth or value either. So what I say now is instead of being that drowning, being that person, the drowning man syndrome and grabbing onto everything, cry if you must cry. It's okay. Just, just let the cry be about the cry. Just feel it, right? Just feel it. And then the, the, the sunshine coming in the morning, for me, this is what I say is don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel until you find the diamond within. So cry, but recognize and identify why am I here? What brought me here and what should I get from here? What's the lesson in this? What's the diamond? What's the discovery? So that when morning comes, you know what you're smiling about. Does that make sense? It does, and, and you know, I think right. you said it all because um, important is that the choices you make, and I and I often say this, the choices you make is exactly the reason why you're where you're at. Yes. You, you know, I, my friend asked me something yesterday, and sometimes I wonder if you know, I as if I'm too perfect, but <laughs> said to me, Peter, have you ever? Have you ever accepted something from someone and then regret it? I'm like, no. And that's the truth because right. for me, I usually think about all the possible everything that will ramifications, happen. right? Yeah, before I I accept something, I am not going to <laughs> right. So I will never regret it. 
Right. I have I literally have no regrets. I mm -hmm. cannot tell you I have regrets and it's not that I'm perfect. But it's your choice. I yes, I usually take responsibility. Right? And and it's so important. It, it, it it's a matter of an enlightenment and I'm I'm glad that you're at the place that you are. Absolutely. And you actually got to that place because mm -hmm. until you realize that the choices that you make is the reason why you are where you're at. Yes. And yes. You will never be better. There are often times I, you know, I see people and I'm like, why is it that if you don't see somebody for 10 years and you see them, then they are exactly at the same place. They are having the same exact problems. It's simply because of the choices that you make, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to make you have to make responsible choices. You have to take responsibility. Do you but, think that that is all there is? Though I mean, well, I I also think well for me, I'm not Jonah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in at the level of of anybody in the Bible, right? But my how I my my experience. His that story resonates with me based on my experience. Like, I would have my instinct telling me to do something or not to do something. And I'm the person that if you call me, I'm going to show up. And sometimes I know this is not a space I should show up in. And everything inside of me is going off. Raquel, don't go there. Don't help that one. Don't do this one. Don't get involved there. But you still go. And I think I was going, going, going because I was not yet at the awareness. And I... For me, I think that, well, I've seen where the universe, the creator, the Jehovah that I know, he literally has to flip me upside the head. You know, those, sometimes you have those persons you have to literally hit for them to wake up. I was yeah. that person. I was that person. Like, I will see it in front of me and step right there. And I'll be getting, don't go there, but I go right there. Or he tells me to do something, and I do something completely different. For a long time, I would hear, get these little signs, like, this is what you're supposed to do. And I, one of the things I did not want to do is ever, 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 ever work with, with Christians or the church or whatever. <laughs> Those are my clients now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I was so rebellious. So, 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 I, I'm saying all of that to say, don't, do you think that there are some persons who, really can't even see where they are. <laughs> I don't know. I, get some, I, I really can't answer that question because it's something, Understood. it's something I struggle with and, and maybe yes. I'm a little bit harsh and I think okay. that everybody should be like me. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Okay. But I can't see for the life of me because mm -hmm. as you said, you are the one who decided, you heard that you're not supposed to do it, and you're the one who decided that you're going to do it. Yeah, because I, I, I wasn't as aware. No, when I look at it, I know. When I was in it, I didn't know. You get yes, what I'm but, saying? But right, thing, go ahead. What, I'm, what I'm trying to say, though, yes, is that yes. before you went in it, uh -huh. and I'm not saying that you won't go into things, right? Oh, yes, yes. But before you went in it, you uh -huh. saw the signs. Well, you they were signs to me at the time. Well, I don't yeah, know. but that's just it. For me, I'm I'm just using my own story as an example, yeah, which is why I'm, I'm the the book I'm writing now is called Finding Happy, um, Avoid Mistakes, Pitfalls, and Career Suicide. Um, because remember, there's there are also things where people get accused of things they never did. It happened to me. And it happened to me in such a way, which is why I know, well, now I'm at a place where I understand that everything that happens to me is in my best interest because the universe loves me and nothing that happens to me happened without my participation. And I'm there now, but I wasn't there before. And it's not, and for me, I was blindsided. But now that I'm out and I'm looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, what, didn't you see that? Like, <laughs> Didn't you see that? I didn't. And there are persons out there because that's why we have studies to understand. Sean Acker is another person who studies happiness. And <laughs> he said when he did the study the first time, only seven persons show up and his mother was a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. How many persons really, for the fact that when, when, I, when I looked at it in my own life, I was surrounded by 
so much negative and and it didn't just happen to me it's, it's when you're driven by your need when your motivation is your need when it is I've got to survive I've got to do this I've, it, it's your need it's not I've got to be happy I experienced happiness for the first time in 2016 Okay. For the very first time in my life, I experienced happiness. I was driving down the road. A friend of mine, I had asked him, how are you? And he said, I'm content. And that was what did it for me. Because he always would say, I'm fantastic. I'm amazing. I'm, and I'd be like, like, nobody's that amazing. Stop it. <laughs> That's what I used to think. And I interviewed him, Garfield Burford. And he came on and he spoke about it too. And when he said content, though, it fits somewhere, in, it connected with me. I'm like, oh, so it's not that his life is perfect. He's making a choice. Exactly. That was when it, it hit me that, oh, he is making a choice. He's making a choice. And then I learned that it's not that I wasn't making choices. I was actually choosing not to be happy because of my environment that I had chosen to be in. The network I chose to have where I couldn't show up happy without being questioned. Have you ever felt like you, you're, I mean, I know you're at a place and you're happy, you're a thriving person. And when I say thriving, I'm not just talking financially because we understand that thriving is way beyond financial. No one yeah. understands that, right? And do you feel like, do you ever feel like when you show up and you're being your, your authentic, happy self, that persons around you are wondering if something's wrong with you? Mara, I don't even think about that enough. <laughs> okay, well, I understand. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I, okay. too had to, I had to pray that prayer about um about content being content. To be honest, for okay. Some time. And I think um there if if there isn't a devotional in the in the book, I've actually mm -hmm. written a devotional about that, because you know I had to pray that prayer about being content. Lord, help mm -hmm. me be content. Right. You understand? Be content mm -hmm. with whatever it is that you have. Yes. So, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I say to you that I don't think about it because the truth is I believe that I'm naive. I think I grew up very naive. Right. And, um, so, therefore, if it is, when, when, when I hear that, like, I had this experience mm -hmm. where I was working with somebody and the person literally told me that they had a problem with me. Oh. And I was like, okay. who has a problem with me? <laughs> I'm like the person who is going to do everything to, you know, to, to, to do my best and I'm always happy. And, and, yes. and so believe you me, Raquel, when those things happen, right. it's literally... Like I am so surprised because the truth is I'm naive and I I, mm -hmm. I, I have this thing where my eyes are set like flint on my <laughs> Yes, and yes. If it, is, if it is that you don't like it then most times I won't even realize. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying pay attention to it. I'm saying have you recognized it? Because, well, I've had to do it because even in my job, I have to pay attention to what happens around me. First of all, what you think of me is none of my business, right? But it happens, right? Where you do have cases where you are around people or you experience clients who feel that they're around persons who they feel like they need to dim their lights. It's like you can't show up yourself. Because if you show up your happy self, it's like you feel like you're offending somebody. And of course, that is telling you you need to change your network. But until you figure that that's what it's telling you, um, I mean, you know, it's about the experience of it. You know what I, I mean? I don't think it's even your network. Because there are times, as I said, you will meet people. Just this one example. told me that mm -hmm. they had a problem with me. It wasn't um, somebody in my network. It was somebody that I had to work with. Well, that's still your network, your work network. So, so it's not. Yeah, no, no, but, your, but I had no choice. Oh, you understand? Changing my network. I had to yeah, work but, with this person. Yes. I yes. had to work with this person. So that's what I'm saying. I Understood. Said, it's not even about just changing your network. But what, what, what I would say mm -hmm. is change your reaction. You have to. There right. is about the four agreements. And mm -hmm. the only agreement I can remember out of this book is that you should not take things personal. 
You're right. Because it's remember. never about you. I don't remember the other right. agreement. <laughs> but <laughs> what I do is when this person said, you say, yes, I reflect on it for a while. But then I say, you know, this has nothing to do with me. Right. This has nothing to do with Peter. Mm-hmm, this has mm-hmm. to do with this person yes. who does not know how to process what is happening around them. And so I become a problem. It has nothing to do with who I am. It's not, because it has see, nothing to do with me being my best self and trying to get my right. work done. Because, right. mark you, I am not saying that I say if somebody criticizes you, and I've had it all my life. I remember having neighbors who, when I was just a little girl, and we did not have anything at all because we grew up poor, there are persons who just did not like us. And right. my neighbors literally just did not like us. But you realize that it is not about you. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that you should not take into consideration what people say about you because I always do that. If somebody says something about me, I I look at it and I say what is true and what is not true. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I use what is true to improve myself. What is not true, I tell myself that, you know what, don't take this personal because it's not about you, it's about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's paradigms, right? Stephen Covey speaks about it, paradigms. We, well... Even this podcast, it's th- there are three principles that um, I use in it, right? You have thoughts, feelings, and actions. Thoughts are, are what you create, the ideas that you create from what you observe in your environment. Then the feelings are the meanings that you give, the meanings and beliefs that you give to what you've observed or what you've created. And then you take actions in kind right based on what those feelings are so you are correct because other people's paradigms or their views on on your activity is theirs mm-hmm. it's their interpretation of of what they've seen you do and their interpretation is based on their own life their own understanding their own value system their own beliefs so it really isn't you it isn't it isn't you i mean exactly and and i mean so it it gets to that point, and, and that is why you have to be self-aware. It's important yes, for you to know yes. yourself. It's important, I mean, for anything, I always say that, you know, you should maintain a threshold. You know, mm-hmm. what, what is it that you can accept? What is it that you can't accept? And you decide that, um, you know, so even for relationships, what, 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 what is it really? What are your values? You know, is this relationship going against my values? Is this relationship making me happy? Right? And, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it's important for you. The moment you understand yourself, yes. you can do just about anything. You can be your best self and you can be who you want to be. And you, you just become successful in life because you understand it's at that time you find your purpose. Right, because you right. understand what your values are, you understand what you like, what you don't like, you you understand mm-hmm. what your weaknesses are, you understand what your strengths are. And then you make decisions based on those because if it is that you don't have those values, then you won't know what is it that you want. Like for example, one of my things is freedom. I like being free. I don't like to be confined <laughs> to a cage. Yes. I don't want to hear that I have to go in the traffic every day to get <laughs> from work. I don't like it. <laughs> yes. And so I, I, we started some flexi time thing at work. Nice. And I decided that listen, the ten o'clock flexi time is me. <laughs> I was absolutely miserable right. when I had to get up at a certain time. So, and so once you know, knew, once yeah. you knew what triggered you, you, were, you knew how to communicate it because you knew what was bugging you. Exactly, and yeah. I knew, you know, I knew how to go to my managers and said, you know, right. I mean, is it possible for us to consider this? Yes. 
you know, you're able yeah. to negotiate better because you know exactly what is yeah. it that you are about and, you know, yeah. what causes you to work better. I know that if I took the, 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 the 7 o'clock shift, I would not get any work done. <laughs> I would not get yeah. any work done because I would be so tired. And, and you know, since my sleepy voice is gone, Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, my voice is literally different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's different in the morning. Yes, I understand. So you have to, you have to know yourself. Okay, so you have to accept what is reality. I'm very yes. realistic, right? I'm very realistic. But creating your reality, but you can also change. What is happening around you? Um, here's a theory in, in positive psychology. Um, Luba Libramersky, Tanya Libramersky. Um, oh, Lord. I'm trying to remember. But basically what it is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find it. Basically what it is saying is that um, what makes you happy is those things that you do that you choose to do, right? right. So um, it is um, it is saying that your genes, okay, the 50-10-40 formula. Think okay. Of, so it is saying that 50% of your happiness is determined by your genes. Oh. 10% is determined by the circumstances in which you live. But 40% of your happiness is determined by your actions. Your attitude or optimism and the way you handle situations. So I'm not saying that you That's should interesting. ignore your reality. You have your circumstances, but you need to understand that it's only 10% of your happiness is determined okay. by your circumstances. Isn't that powerful, though? It is. I have never seen this before. Only 10, so 90%. 90% has nothing to do with your current circumstances. Exactly. And wow. yes, some of it is determined by your genes, but you yes. have all of forty percent, which is just you. All of forty percent that Action. is determined by your actions. What is it that you do? What is your state of mind? So right. that's what I'm saying. You don't have to accept your reality. As you is. Yeah, you right. don't have to tell yourself that. Oh, I'm poor. But mm -hmm. I am not bright. You know, we talk about grit. We talk about grit that talks about um, your, it, it, is, it is your endurance. It is what yes. you do that causes you. So, so it's how much you endure mm -hmm. that causes you to get where you're at. It's right. your level of motivation that causes you to get where you want to be. Right. Right. So, 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 so it's important that you understand. Um, a study was done. A study was done that shows that there were persons who lived in slums that were happy. Mm -hmm. How can you live in a slum and be happy? And we're not talking about the poorness in Jamaica. We're talking right. about, you know, the slums in other parts of the world where people don't have food. Uh huh. I remember when I was writing my book, I. I did not realize that I was poor until one day I went to church and the people from Food for the Poor came and they were telling you the definition of poor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I was poor. <laughs> yes. But I did, not, I did not realize that I was poor right. because, listen, it's 10 brothers and sisters, right? Yes. Two bedroom holes in Central Village, but I tell you, we were always smiling. We were always laughing. Mm -hmm. When we came together, we laughed. I mean, when we cried... There we goes your 50%. <laughs> right. No, but no, I, I don't even... Think, well, I, I don't even know if... That's that my is, personal interpretation. No, I, don't, I actually don't think that one is genetic. I think that is one that, that is based on what my mother and my father decided to do. Wow. It is, and, and um, you know, oh, I was going to say this. When you were asking, when we were talking about um, persons realizing and making choices. Right. 
Positive relationships are important. Support is important because yeah. if I can associate one main thing with my success, I think it has a lot to do with my family support. My family wow. are my biggest cheerleaders, and my husband has actually joined that. Wow. You know, I mean, my biggest That's cheerleaders amazing. are my family members. And I think that is one of the main reasons why I'm so successful. Because I will tell anybody wow. that, listen, no matter what you do to me, I don't care because I have them 10 brothers and sisters right there that I can go to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. And I know that they wow. will support me no matter what. That's amazing. So I, I, I believe that has a lot to do with um, the choices that you make, the people that you're around. You mentioned that, you know, you always had negative people around you. And usually when you have negative people around well, you... Well, not necessarily always had negative persons around me. It's not a matter of that I was saying the persons were around me, but negative thinking. Right. As in everything was just, oh my God, I'm going to do that. You're on another project again. Go again. And they Go. experiencing the fear for your thinking. Oh, if you yeah. did a job, are you going to manage um, the fear where they have to fear you? And in their mind, that's them loving you. Yeah. So yeah, but that kind of thing. But it, then. Yeah. It is them loving you, actually, because I do have persons like that in my family, but. The thing is that I had a good balance because I would go to my big sister and right. uh, she was like, why are you leaving your job? And then I go to my eldest brother. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. and then I go to another brother. I have two brothers that, you know, if it is that you want to do something, go to them. <laughs> because they will tell wow. you, yes, you know. So you know who to go to with what. Right. right. Yeah, but, but I know my sister loves yes, me. Yes. Everything that is within her, she loves me and she protects. And right, right. Like That's just her way. Right. right. So, I mean, but if I want to do something that is out of this world, call those two brothers. Right. So, 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 so that's it. I mean, support, support is That's brilliant. a good thing. My last question. Oh, go right ahead. Go ahead. This theory by Sonia Leblibramersky. Mm -hmm. It's very important for us to understand that yes. the of our happiness is determined by the circumstances in which you live. My final question, <laughs> do you have any recommendations of habits that individuals can practice that will help them thrive in their pursuit of happiness? Uh, any... I think you mentioned quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just to kind of list them, so just in case it would be clear to anyone listening, Top five. So there are quite a bit of um, positive psychology interventions that I could mention. Um, so the first one is gratitude. But I just want to give you some benefits so that let yeah. persons know what are the benefits of gratitude. Um, so emotionally, right. you have a better feeling. You are more relaxed. You are more resilient. You're less envious. And that's a very important one, <laughs> because yes. I remember there was a time when I used to compare myself, and I was like, oh, um, why uh -huh. is it that I cannot achieve what I want to achieve? There was one person I compared myself with, and then um, I was going to work in the wow. morning, and I um, heard this prayer. You're a child of the universe, yes. Yes. and there's a part in it that talks about um, not comparing yourself with others yes. because you really don't know, you know, what that person went through and, and, and so on. Uh -huh. And realize that you're no less than the other person. Another thing is be kind to others. So you can practice random acts of kindness. Invoke positive emotions, as I was saying before, you know. Okay. Try to find time to spend with those people who make you happy. Try to do things that invoke positive emotions for you, and you will find that you are a lot happier with your life. Be compassionate yes, with yes. yourself. Don't be so hard. Yes, on yourself. very oh, important. Accept you for who you are. What else? Oh, purpose and meaning. Purpose and mm. meaning. Oh, my God. I cannot stress that one. Wow. It, it is 
so important for you to find purpose in your life. Right. Find out why God placed you on this earth. Ask him. He will tell you why are you here. Um, another thing you can look at is that thing that you often do the most. What do you find yourself doing the most? What What is this one thing that makes you very happy? I mean, I've been just having conversations that are just oh, amazing. Just, just amazing with yourself and other women and men. Amazing. Just amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, too. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day now. I certainly will. And the same to you. I'm looking forward to your book. <laughs> it's coming out in December on my birthday. So in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. I'll definitely share it with you. All right. Thank you. 501040 theory or principle is that was the most enlightening aspect of um, part of our interview because I did not know that <laughs> I didn't know that 50% of my happiness was based on my genes 10% only 10 measly percent is based on my circumstances but I have a whole 40% that I have control over, which is about my choices and my decisions and what I do, right? Um, hmm, that is, that's, that's powerful. I didn't know, I just assumed that I'm in charge of 100% of my happiness. <laughs> so I had to take the decisions and take a rein on it. I didn't really understand it, but know that I have that information. It really helps me understand because finding, being happy is not necessarily as easy as one may think. Um, because there, there's so much noise, you know, and there's your upbringing, how you were, how you, it, it's, trust me, there's just so many experiences in life that you go through and you don't even realize sometimes that you're making a choice that at the end of the day is going to be so bad for you. I play this game, it's called Klondike and it's pretty much, um, as a Microsoft solitaire game. And every time I play the game, I play the game because it, it helps me in my thinking and it, it's, it's something, it's a, it's a game that helps me in my decision making, build, um, decision making, better decision making skills, right? So this game is where you're stacking the cards to, you're on, uncovering cards to stack them in order to win, right? And you're stacking them from aces to kings. And what I want to share about it is, I realize in playing the game sometimes that there's sometimes the little, the little choices that I make that I never give enough thought to are the ones that cause me to lose the game. And in that game, I'm able to undo so that I can learn. And it just amazes me all the time. But in life, we don't get to undo. We don't get to undo. And sometimes, um, it, you don't make certain decisions sometimes because you want to make you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get myself in this mess or I'm going to No, at every single moment. And I need you to know this. Some, if you're listening to me and you're, you, you hear the sound of my voice, listen to me carefully. You are operating at your best at all times. I don't care what the results are. You're always being your best. And when you make your decisions, you're thinking of you have the best of intentions when you're making those decisions. But we don't get to undo. We don't get to redo. Well, we do get to redo. Well, we don't really get to redo. You get to do it another do it another time, perhaps, or in another way. But we don't get a redo of what has been done already. So don't be too hard on yourself. It's okay. It is okay. And it doesn't mean that because you made a choice that was not the best that did not give you the best outcome. It didn't mean, mean that you didn't make the best choice that you knew how to make at the time. So 50, 10, 40 principle. Your happiness is important. You take that 40% if that's all you get. I'm still going to consider it my, my 100%. Okay, I am 100% in charge of my happiness. That's me personal. That's a personal decision for me. But if you, based on this, this theory, you take your 40 and you make it the best 40 ever. You make it the best 40%. You just be happy. Be well. Thank you for listening to Finding Happy Podcast. I'm Satin Browning. Bye.